What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heal Profoundly and Enduringly. It's been a couple weeks since I've been back here, so welcome. I'm so excited to introduce you to Nikula Das because we've known each other for a few years now and followed each other's journeys, and we love connecting and being able to bring the fabulous spiritual wisdom forward for you. So as you know, Heal is a show where we're sharing those tools, those tried and true tools from experts who really have strong beliefs and opinions on what is necessary to be able to heal the most profoundly and enduringly. And so I love being able to bring people on, especially Nikula Das. So let me tell you who he is. He is the general of the semen retention army and sex guru for the modern man. Nikula's semen retention lifestyle made international news during his run for office in the 2021 Canadian federal election. For most North Americans, this ancient practice was unheard of. Let us know if you've heard of this. You'll find out about it very shortly. And elicited a wide range of reactions, as you can imagine. While there was no correlation between his political campaign and his semen retention practice, it brought a lot of international awareness to the population's lack of sexual knowledge, which is so true, and current battle with porn addiction. So today we're gonna to be talking about the war on porn. So welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the introduction. I appreciate seeing your journey. Like you said, we've known each other for a number of years now. And uh, yeah, I just really appreciate seeing how much you've blossomed and created something really cool that's helping a lot of people in a, in a really profound way. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I was even telling him yesterday or the day before yesterday or something, I had, I was following his old Instagram account and then I followed his new one. And I was like, whoa, like there's a huge shift. And it's so cool to see people grow and shift on this path and like what you step into. And I'm literally like, I honor you so deeply for taking the steps that you are taking outside of the spiritual world. Nothing's outside of the spiritual world, but really elevating it, right? To be able yeah. to put this message out there. And I think that is so brave. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I got to be honest, like I was super nervous about that because it's easy to preach to the choir, right? Like it's easy to get together with people that are all like minded and be like, don't we all just believe the same things about life and how amazing it is? And it's really I, I not that that's anything wrong with that, but it's, it's quite easy to do that. Um, I, I feel like my mission and, and uh, personally, though, is to go to people who don't believe those things yet. And I don't want people to blindly believe anything that I say them, but to present, you know, what we call spiritual is often just fact. It's just life. You know, sometimes these terms like spiritual actually limit us right? Because we get caught in the words and everything that the word means, and we can't see the spirit or the energy or intention behind the words. And so when it came to specifically uh, my own journey with learning about sexual energy, about pornography and about the world, I was like, this isn't, this isn't something just for a specific community. Sex is for everyone. <laughs> Everyone's doing it or everybody wants to do it if they're not yes. doing it, right? <laughs> Right. And uh, and uh, and sex is part of life. It's actually one of the most basic functions, just like eating, sleeping, defending yourself. Sex is one of the basic functions of life. We're all here because two people had sex at some time and there's so much taboo around it within the spiritual community with that. Like it doesn't see that's I don't care about those labels like I don't care what religion you belong to. I don't care. If, I don't care. I don't care if you're atheistic. Sex impacts you, sex influences you. And so I believe it's the one, it's one of the, it's, there's a few things in the world that we can all talk about and it impacts us what, all 100%. And I was really looking, how can I help the most amount of people while I'm here on this earth? What can, what can I do? How can I bring a message forward of, of raising our consciousness? What topic can I impact everybody not just a specific group everybody and i was like oh i get it it's sex yeah sex sex is the unifying subject of the world and if we can understand sex at a deeper level and be open to having mature discussions about it there's so much to unpack there i totally agree and this is you know one of the things we chatted about recently which is like 
I feel the same way, you know, in running these workshops on expanding sexual energy and activating your sexual energy. And it's so funny because I was so sexually repressed for most of my life. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where I was just like, it doesn't have to be this way. I get to choose differently. You know, like when, I, when you say you were sexually repressed, mm -hmm. what, like, what, what, what do you mean by that? Meaning like you were holding it back. You didn't have like a sex drive. And I'm just curious because the, the word repressed could kind of mean different things to different people. Yeah, no, I would say that, I mean, I didn't have much of a drive at all. I right. didn't have much of a drive. And then there was this resistance and controlled component around it. And mm. it's because probably a history of sexual trauma, sure. but you know, I mean, I've worked through that for said so many layers, maybe there's more layers, who knows. But for me, it was realizing how potent sexual energy is, right? Like that's creation energy. That's sure. the energy that created us, that brought us onto this planet, like you said, right? And so it's like, what can I create with this energy? How can I explore this energy, go outside of my comfort zone? Like for me, it was one of my biggest steps to kind of move past that human resistance and be able to feel into the spiritual part of who I am at a much deeper level and a more intimate level. And also like the collaboration of sex with a partner as well. Obviously we can use sexual energy by ourselves or in so many other ways, but even collaborating with a partner just maximizes that creation, right? And that energy. And it was so beautiful because everything in my life just up leveled so yeah. much when I started working with it and it awakened me and at, in every area. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, I tell guys, you know, like when you really learn how to work with your sexual energy in a very conscious way and cultivate it, right? So one of the things I teach guys how to do is build their sexual energy. Now, a lot of guys say, I don't need to build my sexual energy. I'm, you know, I'm horny all the time, right? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get it. But then there's like building that energy and actually allowing it to like, to, to, to almost ferment in your system to actually actually build and build. And just because you're horny doesn't mean that you need to go and have sex when you learn how to actually keep that energy within you and contain it and then learn to transmute it, learn to work with it. It ignites and it, like, you know, it's awesome because obviously you're in a woman's body, I'm in a man's body. And so our experience of it uh, is, is going to be different as well. But, you know, when men and women could come together and have very open, honest conversations about sex, it changes relationships, not just, it, yes, in the bedroom, of course, you know, more intimacy, more pleasure, more connection, more love, right? But also it changes us outside the bedroom because all of that intimacy, connection and love, you can now, you know, it starts to overflow and it now starts to spill out into your work. Now you're intimate with your work. A lot of people work for a paycheck. But when you work like a lover, when you work to, to bring something to someone, you know, now you're not just creating content or making sales calls or trying to make money. Now you're in a space of service. Your mood is like, I'm going to bring something here. So you could be intimate with your work. You could be intimate with your friends. You could be intimate with God, with the world. And it's intimacy that, that I figured out in my own life. And I'm still on this journey of how do I be more vulnerable, more intimate, so that I can actually be fulfilled and fulfillment comes from human connection. It comes from connecting and serving and not just, you know, like a quick, like hi, a quick, oh, I'm gonna, you know, watch porn. Like for, you know, a lot of guys, that's a challenge. They're like, oh, I've got lots of sexual energy. I'm like, no, but you, th there's a difference between lots of sexual energy and you just jerking off a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big difference between what I'm talking about and just a physical expression of sex. And this is a change in consciousness. And, and because, of course, this is where we now go into the spiritual aspects of it. But when you start to work and understand your deep sexual energy and psychology, then you start to understand yourself at a deeper level. And, you know, if we quote the Bible, know thyself, this is one of the most important teachings. Do you really know yourself? And do you know how, do you know yourself intimately? You know, I, I know uh, the, the, the term shadow is used a lot in like, you know, certain spiritual circles, right? Integrating the shadow and all this stuff. And, and this, this type of thing has been, this is not a new concept. This has been around since time immemorial in, in, in different scriptures and spiritual cultures around the world. This idea of integrating our animal side, 
our lust, our, our raw animal emotions, this is being disconnected more and more and more and more because we're living more in our heads and less in our bodies. And so when we learn how to use the sexual energy, as you said, it impacts us tremendously. Yes, inside the bedroom. Yes, you have a better sex life. Yes, you can do all kinds of cool things in the bedroom that you may not be able to have done before. But that translates outside of the bedroom as well in a massive way. See, I love this so much because a few things. One is, this is why I love you so much is because I've always said from the second that I met you, you have the most purest heart of service, like true service to the planet. So celebrating you for that. Oh, Number two, you. it's so funny because like, for instance, over the past couple of weeks, I've gotten even more, I've been focusing on presence more and deepening into presence, right? And so it's funny because the more that I do that, the more love that I feel for my family, the more love that I feel for myself. And it's funny because like the more that I expand this, even with using the sexual energy in the bedroom, it's like, oh my gosh, like this is so expansive and there's so much love here and it feels so amazing. And I get this taste of like what it could look like all day, every day. And there's a part of me that's like, you know what I mean? Like there's a yeah. part of me that's like a little bit like scared or a little bit, and that's of course my human resistance. Yeah, scared and scared of what? The sexual energy or the, no, or the presence, no, the, the love? The level of love. The level of love, yeah, yeah. The level of love. Like it's funny because I've always had a life full of love and it's just gotten deeper and deeper and more expansive. And my capacity to hold that love has gotten bigger. But it's like you reach these next levels, right? And then you get into it and you're like, oh my gosh, like I am literally exploding with love right now. And yeah. it's just so funny because it can be challenging for the human to hold sometimes as oh, well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the, the other piece that I wanted to share here is kind of a little funny, but it was, it was this example of when I was playing with my dog yesterday and I get out this treat that she's obsessed with. And she's like psychotic, you know, she's so excited that she can't even eat the damn thing. She's like rolling around on it. She's running around. She's crazy. She's excited. And I'm looking at this based on that animal instinct you just talked about. Right. And I'm thinking this is the kind of excitement that we feel internally. This is the kind of excitement that can come up for us when we're feeling sexual activation. And then yeah, we yeah. get to this point where we're like, how do I handle this? I don't know what to do, you know, and we kind of have that similar response. For sure. Well, like, so an animal is responding to stimulants, yes. right? Um, so just like we do, right? You see someone and you might have a sexual attraction. You might feel that ooh, a little tingling, right? That's a, that's a physical, that's a biological response to, to a, a stimulation. You also might have a repelling factor like, eh, I ain't got, I, that ain't happening either. Right? So uh, we're always responding to the stimulants around us, but we are not those stimulants. So when we talk about presence, you know, you say I'm diving deeper into presence. Uh, you know, I, I, in my language, right, in the set of language that I have to grasp, in, in right, I would say you're diving deeper into God right? Yeah. Like someone might say you're diving deeper into Krishna or to Christ, like right? we'll use different words to describe this all pervading energy that the more that we and awareness that the more we're in tune with it ourselves within our own life, the more we see it everywhere. And all of a sudden, we're like, Oh, my gosh, this whole thing is at the highest the highest principle is love. But what is love? Is love like I love my coffee or I love this porn or I, I love, you know, I, I love this position. No, that's that's a like, you know, you, know, you like that. You like your coffee. You like that position. You like this sensation. But love is transcendental. It's not about sensation on a physical way. It's about the real sensation of life, which is which is an energy right? It's a flow. And so it's beyond words. Hence, it makes it very difficult to speak about. And then we form all of these, you know, kind of constructs, which I'm not against construct because form is part of universe, right? It's part of life. 
but we form these constructs, but then we can get stuck in those constructs. And we believe that those constructs are what it's all about. It's like, no, the construct is not what it's about. The construct is a platform to help you reach what it's actually about. And what it's about is beyond words. It's transcendental. Hence, we have all of these nice words like love and, and God. We have all kinds of words to try to describe it, right? And so it's something that's experiential, just like sex. You could talk about sex all day long, but anybody knows if you have really good sex, it's, 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 it's beyond words. How do you describe it? It's something, it's like trying to describe someone, you know, have you ever had a banana? You know what a banana tastes like? If you've never had a banana, it doesn't matter what I tell you. Yeah. You will not know the sensation of a banana until you eat it. And so similarly, sexual energy is something that you need to actually experience mm -hmm. as opposed to intellectually try to understand. Same with God. God is something to be experienced as opposed to intellectually understanding. I say that all the time, you know, there's all these books out there. God knows I'm an avid reader, you know, I love learning, love exploring new things at new depths. But it's funny because people are always asking me, do you have a book on the Akashic Records or do you know of a good book on the Akashic Records? And I'm like, I know there's books out there, but I feel very, very strongly it's an entirely experiential space. And that's what I always tell people like, yes, you can read about it and you can access it and all of that. And that doesn't mean that those books are not useful because 100% they are and they're an opening for people for sure. But at the same time, like, yes the experience with god is fully like you need to just immerse to yeah, experience it's, it. yeah it's full yeah. emergence just like just like sex yeah. you have to actually immerse if you're if you're having you know if you're being intimate with someone mm -hmm. and you're not there with them but you're caught in your head or you've got your own stuff going on which we all do you you're not even experiencing that pleasure right and that's the thing we we're like a world where we're, we're there's so many ways to pleasure ourselves in this world like, right I, I actually just uh, released a, a, an article or blog yesterday just talking about the world of pleasure is all around us but it's false pleasure like just go through any walmart line right and you see chocolate bars and you see chips and you see some sexy people on the magazine and it's all trying to appease your desire for pleasure Pleasure is part of life. However, that type of pleasure is impermanent. It can only be sustained for a little bit. Then you need another chocolate bar and another and another. And then next thing you know, what is pleasurable now becomes your pain. Because all that chocolate is now your disease. Mm -hmm. So the desires for pleasure, so we have to ask, well, I desire pleasure, but obviously I, I'm, I can't eat chocolate all day long, just like as much as I love sex, I can't do it all day long because I've got responsibilities and things. So it's like, well, where do we get a permanent sense of pleasure then? Uh, not from the body, but from the soul. The soul is where real pleasure comes from and real pleasure, meaning it's eternal or permanent. Me, and, and anybody knows a permanent feeling or a long lasting feeling of ple pleasure. Let's say you randomly, spontaneously help someone. You didn't mean to help someone, but somebody came along your path and you had the opportunity to serve them. You held the door open for them. You gave them a smile. You served them in some way. You didn't serve their senses, but you served them, their soul. Right away, you have a feeling of fulfillment. Yeah. That's pleasure at a soul level. So we have to define pleasure at a material level or a bodily level, at a mental level, an emotional level, and a spiritual level. And depending where your consciousness sits, what you're aware of in your life, if you're solely aware of the body, then the body dictates everything. And that's generally the state most people live in. They're completely aware of their body and their bodily needs and identities. Hence, all they think about is sex. All they think about is eating next. All they think about is the different ways in which they can make themselves feel comfortable. But the more they do it, the more that becomes a vice now in their life because it's not permanent. Right. So in sexual alchemy, which is the process I teach with inside the semen retention army and why I'm teaching guys 
to get rid of porn out of their life, get out of that, is that it anchors your consciousness, your presence, your awareness completely into the bodily functions of life as opposed to the spiritual functions. Now, here's the secret of life. If you can fulfill the soul, then naturally the emotions, the mind and the body become fulfilled. And next thing you know, these vices, these vi these pleasures, these, I call them the cherry on top. It's like, now you can, now you experience sex, experience sex from a place of presence, as opposed to a place of thirst or need. I need sex, I need sex, I gotta fulfill myself. Mm -hmm. To as opposed to, I don't need it, but hey, if you step into the space and you get the opportunity to enjoy sex in this way, it's going to blow your mind. So it's a very different approach, not just to sex, but to life. And, and I really believe that's what's missing in, in the world right now. It's missing in our politics. It's why I ran for politics in Canada. It's because let's get the message out in a big way and let's stop preaching to the choir and thinking we're all that. All right. It's easy to preach to the choir, but I'm challenging everyone. If you know, if you're hearing me, I mean, really hearing me. Get out of your comfort zone and start talking to people who might not hear you. I, you, you, you know, in the intro, you mentioned that I got international, you know, yeah. uh, uh, rec uh, I don't want to say recognition, but let's say a lot of articles are written about me. Yes. Here's the truth about that. Almost 90% of them were negative. Exactly. <laughs> Almost 90% of them painted me in a light to try to make me look crazy. Now that's a political tactic. That was a political attack by political people who are, are scared of people like me who are exposing these deeper human issues because this sexual energy is not just, hey, can I have better sex? It's, can you have a better life because you are more present and aware of your true power and creative ability? And we have people right now that are holding the levers of society who are diminishing, suppressing, and purposefully keeping this information away from people. This is not new. The practice of semen retention, as you mentioned in the beginning, it's an ancient practice. Right. This, this has been known. Why do you think every religion has some kind of sexual regulatory principles, whether they whether some religions have sex only for children or right or they aspire to that? Or, for instance, the Orthodox Jewish um, community, uh, sex, it, no masturbation. It's, it's it, none of that. It's because it's about. But Friday nights, it's you know, it's time to spend time with your partner and, and, and enjoy that energy in other traditions. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, for instance, I know I grew up Christian, right. In the Catholic tradition, and it was like, no masturbation. It's a sin. Right. You know, but no one ever explains why. And if you don't get into it and really understand it, then you won't accept that these things are negative for you. You won't accept it because you'll be like, I don't understand. But as soon as you understand why, and you're able to be truthful with yourself and say, Holy shit, that really does impact me. Yep. I mean, if as a guy, if I'm like, look, you know, I'm a guy, right? <laughs> I'm a young, healthy guy. So I've got enough sex drive to last me, you know, probably too much, right? And in the sense of that, if I allow that to control me, then yeah, all I'm going to do is, 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 is masturbate all day long. I'm going to watch porn. And then I'm going to be like, oh, I don't feel fulfilled because now I need to get more of that high. Now I'm going to eat more. I'm going to, it, the, the, the trigger effect is mm -hmm. detrimental. And much of our marketing in today's world is driven by sex. Look at how much sex is put in front of our face in our music, in our movies, in our media. Uh, uh, why do you think they put a hot girl next to the car you want to buy? Because at an unconscious level, all of those things, money, status, fame, they're all symbols of I am a great, as a man, they're symbols of, of I'm a great provider and protector and you should bang me. That's all they're saying. That's all they're saying, right? 100%. It's 100% yes. what's going on. And so it's not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing, but it's being used to exploit the population. And if the population doesn't understand how they work, know thyself then you will always be 
a slave to a system that wants to exploit you and not empower you. Because guess what? You are a money machine to our current system. You are a number on a spreadsheet and you, you are a tax number. You are a, you are a, and people don't want to hear this because they don't want to know the truth, but the truth will set you free. And it's time that we stop just preaching the truth to other people who know it. We need to associate with each other so that we get uplifted and inspired by each other. So that, but then we need to take it out to the masses. Right. And reestablish consciousness, whether you call it Christ consciousness or God consciousness or what, where, where the world and the human population is aware of the spiritual nature of life and re in touch get reignited about that because that will solve so many of the world's challenges as a politician i will tell you that politicians don't solve your problems our job is to create policies that in my opinion are supposed to provide for you and protect you and the first thing it's my duty as a leader, as a politician, it's my first duty in my, in my perspective to provide knowledge and information and an example of leadership that is beneficial for you, not to exploit you for my own personal gain. But right now we have political leaders that are pirates. They plunder. They take from their own people. They don't lift them up consciously. The establishment does not want you to be powerful. They want you to be compliant. And it's the reason that right now we're in the situation that we're in politically. It's the reason we're so divided as a human population right now. And it's time for those who understand this to step up. And so that's why I'm doing it in my little corner of the world and doing it as big and as best as I can. And we also have to admit in our own journeys that we need to get better. Like right after the election, I was like, I need to get better. I need to be better, sharper, more focused. I need to work with my own energies in a more powerful way so that we can be of service to others in a more powerful way. And this spirit of service is missing when all we think about is how we can please ourselves. Yes. I love that so much. And I have a quick question for you around that. Yeah. It's so interesting, especially, you know, I primarily work with women, you primarily work with men. Yeah. And so one of the things with opening the sexual energy and activating that is really a lot of women who are hesitant to open to receive, you know? So it's interesting yes. because it's like, okay, we want you to practice receiving. And so, yes, we are using the body as a tool when we're working with sexual energy to kind of access that layer of receiving. I personally see that as like almost like a temporary crutch, right? Until we're able to actualize that and connect to the higher form, right? But I just want to see if, if where you are on that and like if you have any thoughts regarding like finding that balance, right? And that harmony with, yes, I want to actually intentionally use my physical body for this without getting obsessed, without getting fixated, without making it about the body. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's very difficult, you know, to to make that distinguish. Hence, uh, you know, what we're calling spiritual knowledge or life knowledge or wisdom, you know, needs to be reignited within our education systems and within our within within the culture of society to understand that we are more than a body, right? You're also a mind. I can't see your mind, but I know you have a mind because we're speaking. You know, I have a mind. I can't see your emotions with my physical senses, but I know you have emotions. You know, I have mine. And while I can't see your soul with my physical eyes, I can see my soul i can see your soul with my soul because i'm aware i have a soul so i'm very aware that you are a soul and so this is the type of awareness that we have to bring back into society to be able to receive now when you get to that level the idea of receiving and giving they're two sides of the same coin right like it's just flow of life right like you know we can use these words uh, but they're like dualistic words. Am I receiving or am I giving? Well, right now I'm doing both. I mean, I'm giving because I'm giving knowledge right now. I'm giving my time. I'm giving my energy. I'm giving the things I've learned, but I'm also receiving simultaneously because as you give, so shall you receive, right? So this is, you know, uh, what you reap, you shall sow or karma or whatever language floats your boat to describe these universal principles and, and laws of, of the world. Law, not, I'm, when I say law, I'm not talking about 
about man written laws. I'm talking yeah. about unwritten spiritual laws that govern us all and that are above any man written mandate or law. And so these specific things are where we're, where we're not being aware of anymore, but these were taught in more ancient societies. When it comes to using the body, it's first of all, when you understand that I am a soul that has a body and I am not the body, then the relationship with your own body changes, just like this microphone I'm using to speak in. I'm using this microphone to broadcast this message and to have this conversation with you. We're using, you know, Zoom and, and all the social media. See, we're using these things, but we are not these things. Correct. Just like I use my vehicle, my car to get here and to get there but I'm not the car, but because I enjoy, I understand that the vehicle, the car is the way that I'm going to get to my friend's house and my family's house. And I could, I, I could carry out my business using this tool. Uh, similarly, I am a soul or consciousness within this human body. And I'm using the body to broadcast a message to broadcast uh, to the same way. I'm using this microphone. I'm using this body. Yeah. So we have to know what is the purpose of the human body and what, why, where, how should we use it? Most people know their iPhone better than they know their body. Yes. You know, like you, you see, you mentioned at the beginning, uh, you, you know, that you felt you were sexually repressed, right? You didn't have a sex drive. You didn't um, know how to maybe ignite it. And then there was blocks around that, right? Like control and all these type of things. So it's a function of the body. That you're essentially saying, and I know you've worked on this, right? So I'm not saying you personally, but as that example, um, it's a function of the body. It's like an application on your phone, but you don't know how to use it. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> right? That's all it is. It's like you, you have an app. You have an app called Sex Energy. Yeah. And if you know how to use this app, your entire life will totally change. Just like if you use an application right on your phone, you know, I just got a budgeting app. Right. I just got this budgeting app called You Need a Budget. Right. It's, it's a really cool budgeting app. I'm learning the app. Right. It's it's if I know how to use the app properly, then my I get better at budgeting. My yeah. life gets better because I know how to use the app. But am I the app itself? No, I'm not the app. So I'm not identified with the app. I'm not I, I don't if the app doesn't work tomorrow, I'm not like, oh gosh, I don't work. No, the app doesn't work or it's not working to the pressed functionality. So similarly, you have to ask yourself, is your body, are you using the apps that come with your body? And the answer for most people is no. And the reason I can say that so confidently is because I will tell you that I'm not using all my apps to its full because I've learned, I've got some applications that I didn't realize I have. And now I'm learning to use them. I'm like, holy shit. And now I'm thinking, I wonder what other applications I'm unaware of that this body has. So the body is a tool in which you express your consciousness. Yes. That's it. Yes. And that's how you, that's how you can use the body in a balanced way, in a flow for to the giving and the receiving, right? Yeah, and to detach from it, right? To and not to detach from it. Attached or to be codependent on it. Instead, like I posted something the other day, just really brief, that was just like, you know, you're not disconnected from your power. You can still be incredibly empowered regardless of what's going on outside or within you, you know, within your yeah. physical body, like whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, you know, like, and I use this tool a lot with helping people with chronic illness you know, mm -hmm. it's this idea of like separating yourself from the physical body and being able to care for the physical body, understand the little apps that might be off, like you're talking about, right? To be able to tweak those, to understand your physiology and allow yourself to, like you said, know your body better than you know your iPhone in a way that that knowledge allows you to detach too. You That's know? That's right. That's yeah. True. The more you know about a subject, also the more you're unattached to it because you're not you're you're not identified with it. And and I'll even say that it's not necessarily about unattachment. It's about being attached to the to the thing that is real. Or when I use the word real, we can say permanent. So yeah. I acknowledge everything is real, right? This body is real, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not permanent. It has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know when that is. But it has I, one. Maybe you're going to be the one that never dies. Yeah. Well, I will never die spiritually. 
<laughs> Correct. <laughs> but 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 you know, but but physically, you know, as much as as the materialists want to believe they can live forever, they cannot. Nope. Because nature's law says that there is a beginning and there is an end to all material creation. So what we want to do is not be, is is the natural unattachment to vices or to diseases comes from being attached to what is permanent. What is permanent is spiritual or what we can call energy. Energy is scientifically proven to never die. Correct. It's scientific. It's pr it's proven. So people love science these days, right? They love that word. They want to use that word because it's like a it's a gives them it's a it's a construct that gives that they can recognize. Great. So let's use science then. Science has proven that energy never dies. It simply transforms form. Mm -hmm. So similarly, I am an energy, and I will transform form. Yeah. In fact, I've already transformed form because yeah. at one point I was a I was in a, a boy's body and a teenage body. And now I'm learning to be a man in the world. And what does it mean to be a man in the world? What does it mean to be in this male body? And that's something that, uh, again, when we talk about our war on porn and we talk about sexual alchemy and semen retention, what we're really saying is, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a soul in a man's body in this world? And what is my duty as a man in this body? If I use the car irresponsibly and I then I end up in a ditch. Yeah. But if I use the car responsibly, I end up in the proper destination. Mm -hmm. Your body is your vehicle of life. If you keep your body well, you you live a good life. You keep your body bad, you live a hard life. It's as simple as that. So right now, we're living in a world where healthcare, for example, has been hijacked by big pharma. Yeah. yeah. Big pharma has told us that healthcare is popping a pill. That healthcare is building more hospitals. That healthcare is, um, you know, uh, 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 going on a diet. Now yeah. you're living healthy. This is not health. Right. That's not health care. Yep. Health is a lifestyle mm. yes. that is every day. Health is our duty. Health is not something we do or we buy some course and now I'm getting healthy. Healthy starts from first having an understanding of the importance and value of this human body. So much to the point where you value it so much that you're like, hell no, I ain't putting that in my body. Yep, exactly. Why would I put that in my body? God gave me this body or nature has designed this body. If the word God scares you and now you want me to alter it because you think you're better than God. I'm sorry. I'm here to tell you that ain't the way it's going down. At least in this little temple I call Nicholas Pereira. <laughs> 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 or Nakula does, which is oh, my spiritual man, I name. Love that, right? It depends on the day, right? Yes, um, right. So, what what's your plan for right. like declaring for winning this war on porn? Like, what, what do you have in in your plan? I want to know. Yeah. So, first of all, I want to I want to backtrack it just a little bit to say yes. why have we declared war on porn? Well, yes, we declare yes. war on porn because porn is the supreme temptation meaning this it's it's the ultimate sex if sex is used in its natural expression like you said and you've experienced and i can see it in you right like oh, when i look at you i'm like this is not the same lord that i know right exactly, exactly. i was like i was like and, and i'm gonna be very open and honest and my wife is sitting right here right you know so, so right like, but this is a sexy woman now in front of me yes. right yeah. right and you know it you yeah. know it 100 i say it all the time <laughs> yeah you i could tell you know it just by the way you show up yeah into the, her, her sexual energy because you embody it right so it is a different so when sex is used in its natural form actually Boom. because sex energy is creative energy you were we were literally from a physical perspective we were conceived during sex and it's that same energy that's like think of like a battery that moves something forward it's that same sexual energy that's actually multiplied itself and 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 created 
you know, these bodies that we have that we're that we're that these that, that that's encapsulating our spirit and our soul. And so we have to declare war on porn because it kills your spiritual consciousness or your awareness of the other aspects of you. Yeah. Porn is only a physical expression of sex and it's not even you having sex. I'm sorry, but you're not having sex when you're watching porn. Right. You're watching two people and they're not having sex. They're acting. Exactly. exactly. They're not having sex either. They're acting. Because anybody who's tried to reproduce a porn scene knows it never. It's like, well, it didn't I mean, it didn't look as hot as that, right? <laughs> I was like, well, that, that was, I was like, that was fun, but I was like, oh, how come? Well, yeah, because the angles weren't there, and you're out, out, out you're on my hair, and like, you know, it's like, oh, see, you, they <laughs> cut those scenes out, right? You know, they cut those scenes when she needed a break and was like, that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. We don't get to cut those scenes out. We're, oh, my bad, my bad. Let me go. Oh, sorry, am I on your hair? Oh, sorry, right, right. right. So we have to be real. And that's the thing in this world of as much as I love social media and I love entertainment, it's fake. Uh huh. Yeah, it's fake. So yeah. we have to declare war on porn because we have to win human consciousness back. And porn is the enemy of human consciousness. It's the absolute epitome. It's worse than your chocolate bars that you're eating. It's worse than the, 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 the dope that you might be smoking. It's worse than the alcohol you're consuming because it totally anchors you to the animalistic part of life, like a, a hog. A hog is like a hog will, will bang anything. His mother, his sister, his blah, 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 right? Because, because a hog is completely controlled by the body. So a hog's level of consciousness, if you're completely controlled by your body and your bodily desires and you have no uh, control or awareness over the higher um, elements to life, the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of life, then you're a hog. Yeah. You're a hog. Mm -hmm. You're an animal. But the human form of life, we are not animals anymore. Mm -hmm. We have animal parts to us. But now we are more aware of our emotional parts, our mental parts. We have complex language. We can create, we can build empires and we can get to know what is permanent in life. We can ask the most important questions of life. Who am I? Why am I here? What is the purpose of this life? What is God? Does God exist? Do I have a relationship? These are the questions the philosophical questions that the human being can explore. But if we waste this human form of life completely on our animal desires, we've wasted the opportunity to understand who we are at higher, higher natures, to, natures till eventually we can become liberated completely from our animal existence and we can become spiritual beings or full embodiments of God or Christ or Krishna or however language you want, you want to put to it. I love that. I love that statement of that we are winning consciousness back. I mean, yes. talk about like that, honestly, like that gives me chills. It reverberates at like every cell of my being. It's just like, yes, like that feels like that bigger mission, right? Like That's that right. bigger mission, that bigger purpose and fulfillment, right? Is winning consciousness back. I mean, that's just like, so yummy. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and consciousness is not something I can give anybody. It's already who you are. It's just reawakening. God, I can't give God to anybody because you're already part and parcel of God. All we're doing is reigniting or reawakening what's already in you, but it's what the establishment is trying to suppress, right? We have a, a, a the establishment is trying to suppress it and they know, see, this is interesting. When you you really start to study different cultures and, and aspects of life. I've studied a lot of military strategies and political strategies. See, political strategy is war. Politics is war, right? And so war doesn't always look like boom, 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 a gun. That's a hot war. But politics is a war of ideas or it's a war of consciousness. It's a war of ideas and, and, and values. And, and what right now is we have an atheistic communist type of agenda that's happening and it's spreading like a disease over the world. And what they do, look at any communist country. What's the first thing they try to do? Suppress the church or the established religion of the day. Why? They try to separate church and state. This is the separation of spirit and matter. This is the separation. This is the physical manifestation of, 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 a, of a very dark type of, of, of consciousness that says, we are just chemicals 
And all we are is chemicals that come together. So therefore I can solve everything from chemicals. I can jab you with something and solve your problems. No, you can't. I can, I can just give you this pill and solve your problems. No, if that was true, we would, if that was true, we would have the healthiest population in human history right now. Yep. Because we have more pills and more chemicals than ever before, yet we have more depression, more anxiety, more divorce rate, more impotence, more premature ejaculation, more testosterone loss, more uh, suicide and depression. We are weakened with this type of philosophy, this communist, atheistic philosophy that is in our world and that's permeating everything in all of the systems of society right now. It's horrible. It's diseasing us. And it's and porn is the epitome of that weapon. So military military uh, circles know this. They know that sex is a human basic motivator. And if you can control someone's sexual energy or someone's sex drive, if you can deplete them of it, if you deplete a man of his sex drive, he won't stand up for nothing. He won't even get the projects done at home. Mm -hmm. that, that window that you want fixed, that room that you want painted, that project, it won't get done because he won't have his basic motivator. If he's depleted that, this is the semen retention part. If you are ejaculating daily as a man, you are depleting your very vital life force and basic motivative energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, big pharma's lying to men, telling them that they need to ejaculate every single day to avoid prostate cancer. While there are some studies that do show that it is a very, it's not the, it's not a, an absolute rule and they want to perpetuate this lie. So to keep men weak, it's really interesting because certain societies will not allow that type of stuff. Like I know in China, for example, they're very much more disciplined than we are in the West. Hence, China is winning the world right now. China is the superpower. They're taking everything. Why? They're more disciplined, more focused, more self-controlled. They don't indulge in the same type of uh, 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 things that we do. And hence, they're a stronger population, right? Our nations here in the West are, are weakened by our own desires. We're, we're weakened by our own indulgence because we don't have the motivation. So- Military, military knows this. Uh, military, there's even certain um, uh, troops that will actually get their men. For instance, there's a link between sex and violence. Unsuppressed sexual energy becomes violent, all right, over time. There's a link now between pornography and, and violence, violence towards women, violence towards, uh, towards underage sex trafficking is, you know, right now we have one of the largest sex trafficking trials going on right now in the world. Mainstream media and the establishment's not talking about it. Epstein is 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 is, is right hand person is being on trial right now, and all we hear about is is the flu and the flu and the flu and the flu and the flu, and we don't hear about these very real raw things that need to be addressed because it's being suppressed. Military, some troops in the military actually will get their men to watch porn or naked women before they go into battle, so they're all hopped up. And then they go into battle because they're so frustrated because they don't know how to express that. Sexual frustration makes a man less than a man. He can't be controlled anymore. He can't think. He can't use his intelligence. He's just like, ah, oh, I got to get this out. So military knows this. Military also knows that if you, if you don't, if you suppress a person's sexual energy or exploit them, they lose their very foundation and grounding because it's our very foundation and grounding as a human being. We right. have to understand sex at a deeper level. Yes, yes, yes. So this is our war on porn. This is why we're raging it. It's why we've declared it. And it's why we're going to win it. And I'm very confident we're going to win it because truth always beats the lie but the lie puts up a resistance it puts up a big fight and so we have a big uh, we have a big war uh, ahead of us we have a big fight how we're going to win this war is a three-prong attack the first thing that we're going to do is do this i'm looking for every opportunity one to one one to i don't care i want to educate anybody and everybody who's open and willing to listen on why 
they need to learn more about sex, learn more about their sexual energy and learn to work with it educate the population mass education needs to happen about sex to destroy the shame guilt and taboo around it mm-hmm. right uh, uh um that's the first thing mass education the uh, uh the porn companies have been extremely efficient just like the establishment uh, uh the mainstream media they are extremely efficient in selling their propaganda of lie we need to sell the truth and we need to be efficient and we need to get good at it. So we have to be good at business and we have to be good at marketing and we have to be good at all of these skills that sometimes us spiritual people are not interested in, but we have to get good at these things because it's part of the game, right? And that's the thing. It's not about what I'm interested in. It's about what needs to happen for this, for us to get the result, right? So mass education is number one. So I'm looking for opportunities to speak more and more and more. Um, and I'm willing to speak to anybody. I, I, I was on the Howard Stern show, right? For those familiar yeah. with Howard Stern, uh, Howard Stern is arrogant. Howard Stern is ignorant. Howard Stern has, uh, 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 but yet at the same time, I know he's kind of not. He's an entertainer is what he is, but he's selling out because he's into transcendental meditation. He's into spiritual stuff, but he doesn't talk about it openly. So he is a pirate. He exploits his people by selling them lies. I was on the Howard Stern show. Him and his guests were completely rude to me, completely ignorant, dismissed everything I'm saying, but yet in his own life, he knows the truth. In fact, he had Donald Trump on his show. He interviewed Donald Trump as well. And he asked him about masturbation. Now, whether you like Donald Trump or don't like Donald Trump is not the point. The point is this, Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, has risen to very high heights in his life materially. Right. And I don't, you know, we all got things to work on, me included. Okay. So, right. So I'm not holding anyone to perfectionism. Here's what, so Donald Trump, uh, Howard Stern was like to Donald Trump. So do you, do you masturbate? And Donald Trump's like, no. And he said, really, you don't rub one out once in a while. And he says, no, it's a waste of time and it gets you nowhere. He says, it's a lot of effort and it gets you nowhere. See, Donald Trump has become a powerful man because he is, he expressed, now it's clear that Donald Trump likes sex. Like, you know, it's clear that he likes women, right? Like he doesn't hold back, right? And that's the thing, because he's a man. And it's like, we forget that it's okay to be a man in this world. I like sex. I'm attracted to women. And if you're gay, great, that you're expressing it there. I don't care about that. It's like, but we demonize him for being a man. But yet look at where he's gotten and he doesn't masturbate and he doesn't drink alcohol and he's because he keeps Genghis Khan like Genghis Khan don't like Genghis Khan hate him love him. The fact is Genghis Khan said a man who could control himself and stay away from the alcohol will become a conqueror of men. These are something great kings and leaders knew and discovered King Solomon. Uh, had 600 wives type of thing or something like this, became the richest man on the planet ever to live, including in today's times, but more than the Rothschilds, more than these great emperors, right? Right? King Solomon. And what was his secret? Sex transmutation. The yellow emperor of China. The yellow emperor of China used to have sex with different women every single night, concubines and stuff in in that era, but he wouldn't ejaculate. He understood what I teach, which is sexual alchemy, how to have non-ejaculatory sex. Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs would pull out, not ejaculate during sex. His partner uh, verifies and says, yes, he would pull out. And you know what his reason was? He would say, I need that energy for my intelligence so I can build my wealth and power. Wow. Right? So great, great, great people in history all knew this, but yet big pharma, mainstream media, They continuously suppress this information. So we need to do mass education. Number two is we can win it in the political realm. Uh, uh, I am, uh, 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 I'm far from this. This is a very long thing that we're in, but I am looking to uh, introduce and pass bills within the Canadian legislation that then can be used by the rest of the world to be able to regulate pornography industries. Now, there is regulation already around them somewhat, but we can be tighter. And this is, and, and more important, I want to say something. I'm not anti porn, just like I'm not anti vaccine or I'm not anti anything. Yeah. I believe fully that you have the right to choose how you want to live your life. That is your human right. It's not a government given right, it's a human right because the government did not create you. So, therefore, they do not own you. 
They cannot prove that. You can only own something that, like if I've created a business, I can say I own this business because I can prove I've created it. Nobody can prove that they created you, right? Right. So therefore, you're not owned by anyone. Mm -hmm. You are sovereign under the law of God, yes. under the law of spiritual law. This is what the population has forgot. In fact, the word law, law, land, air, water, land and water balance each other. But when the balance, when the tips, the scales are tipped out of balance, we must go to air, which is air, spiritual law. And spiritual law says I'm sovereign. No one can prove they've created me. No one could prove anything about me other than a spiritual governance. So therefore, we must return ourselves back to spiritual law. And this is what will balance back the society, the male feminine that's out of balance right now, all the hate, all the anger, all the identity politics. It will be balanced when people realize, right, those are things I do in the world but who I am is not necessarily what I do. I do politics, but I'm not a politician. I do sexual alchemy, but I'm not a, a sexual, like that's not my who I am. I am the soul, that's it, right? And so the second thing that we need to do is at, at a political level is begin to regulate and put pressure on the pornography companies the same way that we did with alcohol and tobacco companies. The tobacco company, the tobacco advocates have led the way for us to advocate against porn companies in the same way. To, uh, they did such a great job of, of see, what the, what the porn, uh, excuse me, what the cigarette companies did back in the day is they integrated cigarettes into the culture so that it became widely acceptable. So cigarettes were everywhere, all your favorite stars were smoking, blah, 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 blah. And so that became the thing because one of our human basic instincts is social acceptance. As a survival mechanism, we look to be accepted by groups of people. Mm -hmm. Once you understand that God, I don't, I'm not looking for acceptance from you because I'm already accepted by God, mm -hmm. then I don't need a group to accept me or not. I can simply stand in truth and say, well, this is what it is. And this is the power of God. And this is why, again, the establishment tries to kill churches and worship and religions of the day. They don't want us gathering. They don't want us together. Because as long as we're separate, we forget that our strength comes from each other. And our strength and fulfillment of life comes not from consuming, but by giving and helping and seeing each other flourish. Like a mother or father who sees their child flourish and is fulfilled by that they're like, i could die now my kids are happy i can live in peace because that's your function that is nature to serve others mm -hmm. so in the political realm we can bring uh harder legislation to porn companies we can hold them responsible like in canada canada is actually the federal government has opened up an investigation against pornhub mm. pornhub has a sister site on the dark web a lot of people don't know this so Pornhub, most people know Pornhub. It's the 10th most visited website in the world, uh, right? So it's one of the most, the highest traffic right now. There's millions of people right now depleting their energy to, por to Pornhub. Well, Pornhub, the Canadian government has launched an investigation because it is a, the, the parent company of Pornhub, which owns many different pornography. Pornhub is not the company. There's a, uh, and I forget their name now, but there's a, a parent company that owns many different branches of pornography companies. Uh, they are a Canadian company based in Montreal and they distribute porn over the internet all worldwide. But the Canadian government has launched a federal investigation into Pornhub, mainly because of their sister site, which is on, on the dark web, which is where you get all your kitty porn, where you get all your child sex trafficking and the darkest and evil, the most darkest parts of the human consciousness is found on the dark web. The internet essentially is a reflection of human consciousness in a way. Yes, that's what everything. Just... Yeah. Yes. Everything on the web and we have a dark web. That's the unconscious mind. Yes. And that's, exactly. right, that's all right. That's the all stuff that the real nasty stuff that we have to go in and look at and deal with. But Pornhub, even on the open web that we, the, the most of us use when we sign on to Google or whatever, you know, things that, however, we're logging on to the web, we're using it. Pornhub has also violated, uh, you know, they're not being held responsible to what they're distributing. So there's cases right now of, for instance, revenge, you know, maybe you make a sex tape for your enjoyment with your wife or your spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. That was for you and your privacy and your fun. But now you guys break up. Someone takes that, uploads it onto Pornhub. 
not giving the permission of those people. These are violations of our privacy, violations of our basic human rights and our dignity. So Pornhub is under investigation. We can continue to fuel that fire by continuing to speak openly with passion and conviction about the, the values of pornography and how it destroys human consciousness, how it weakens us, and how it, it takes us into these very dark places into our own psyche. So by using legislation and by using laws and advocating to our governments and to our governing bodies that pornography is detrimental, we now have the science to show it. We have the science to show that your prefrontal cortex can be damaged, we meaning the, 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 for those who aren't familiar of the function of the prefrontal cortex, your judgment, your, uh, your ability to have long-term thinking, so good decision-making all gets reduced when you have a smaller prefrontal cortex you're easily controlled. You can't make good decisions. You, <clears throat> you can't see what is a good thing for you. You basically become a victim to your vices. All you can do is think about how you can please yourself in the moment and not have long-term thinking. Uh, it shows that it creates new neural connections in the pathway, similar to alcohol, similar to uh, cocaine, similar to sugar. Sugar is also a drug, processed sugar, not natural sugar, right? So all of these things uh, we can be advocating against. We can put strong, stringent laws to, to regulate the porn companies and hold them responsible, just like we would hold a drug dealer responsible for, 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 for dealing drugs. A yeah. drug dealer knows that they're dealing poison. The pornography companies know that they're dealing poison. They know it. They're very aware of this. That's why they're doing it. They know it. They know they want you hooked. Why do you think they give it to you for free? Yeah. They give it to you for free because what they want you hooked and then they can upsell you. Right. Well, oh, now yeah. buy yeah, now, now buy this, now buy that. Now put your credit card in. Oh, by the way, we've got this problem. And then the pharmaceuticals exploit it. Oh, you're having impotency problems. Well, if you stop jerking off and you stop watching porn, guess what? Most impotency, impotent problems or premature ejaculation will be self-corrected by the body. But pharmaceuticals don't tell you that. What do they do? Don't worry. We've got testosterone pills. Big Pharma is prescribing testosterone now more than ever before, because since the 1920s, men's testosterone levels has been dropping on the planet. Hmm. What happens when you have a low testosterone population? You don't have anybody to provide or protect for the population. And then you've got pirates who come in and exploit the population, steal from them, overtax them. Hmm overwhelm them, overburden them. We've got two mother, father, or, or, or both, everybody's working. Nobody's spending time together. The family core is being diminished. So many issues. So we can use, so our second, so our first prong of attack, how we're going to win is mass education, advocacy. Second is we can win it on the political level by passing legislation and advocating to our governments uh, to, to regulate and hold these drug dealers accountable for the drug that they're uh, 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 massively distributing to the population. And the third way we can win it is on the individual level. And of course, that's what the semen retention army is. It's core business, my core business uh, as a sex guru and guru just means teacher, a fancy word for teacher, right? As, as a sex teacher and as a, someone who's advocating that men not ever not ejaculate again or not, you know, I'm not telling you don't have sex. I'm not telling you have to live like a monk. I'm telling you, though, just find sex the expression, right? Have a girlfriend, have a wife, have, you know, and, and put your sexual expression there in a loving, open way. And you'll have a great sex life and you'll be more child. Once you have started having great sex, porn won't even you'll lose all its taste anyways, because you'll be like, why would I do that when I get to this? Why would I watch it when I can do it? Why, you know, any type of thing, right? You know, right, right. Well, and you're exposed to a different level of ecstasy that you're not necessarily right. trying to be aware of when you're just taking part in the physical act, you know. And that's what's so beautiful about the process, you know, is really opening you up to a level of ecstasy. It's like, why the hell would I go back to something that's less than? Yeah, you lose the lower taste when you catch the higher taste for something, then you lose yeah. the lower taste. Once you catch the taste of health, you'll, you don't want to go back to eating bad because you've caught the taste for health. When we're unhealthy, you know, it's like sometimes we can't see that there's a higher taste because our, right. our senses are dulled. We're like, no, but this is good. Why would I give it up? This is good. 
because there's actually something better for you. But sometimes we can't see that. So it takes someone who's experienced something better. And this is where the word faith comes in. In a way, yes, you know, you have to take a little bit of faith. You have to take a bit of a risk and say, well, let me try it and see. Like I encourage any man, try, try, go. See if you can even do it. See if you can go 30 days without ejaculating. Most men can't even do it. Oh, yeah. Right? And now... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See if you could do it and see how you feel. Don't take my word for it. Yep. Try it. And if you say, oh, that's stupid. I'm not even going to try it. That's fine. That's your choice. You got free will and choice, but you've cut off the possibility of greatness or something greater, a higher pleasure. I want you to be blessed. That's why I'm telling you. It's not because I want to suppress your energy because I want it out. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be abundant. I want you to be a fulfilled human being. So therefore, that's why I'm saying it. But you have to go, do I, do I believe that he wants the best for me or not? That's the question we're all asking ourselves right now with our current government systems. Do we believe they want the best for us? If they want the best for us, why aren't they telling us these truths? Why, aren't they, why are they suppressing one side of the story but always amplifying another? Someone who wants the best will look at things openly because mm -hmm. they'll say, well, we have to consider this. If someone's presenting something and they've got the consider it if the oh, scientific your society your audio is cutting out a little bit oh in my back you're back yeah yeah if, if we if we're denying if we're not open to looking at, at at things that of of an opposite opinion of us then we can't call ourselves intelligent then we're basically just you know we're just like kids like a child does that right no I, 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 that's what we are right we're like have the emotional level of a 16 year old essentially and that's the other piece too. It's like also just taking the bigger vision and the bigger picture, you know, and then being able to say like, what is 30 days in the realm of things and the realm of my life? Like that 30 days opens up how much vitality for me, right? That's that 30 right. days opens up how much awareness, how much more intimacy with myself and other people, you know? That's right. Yeah. Like imagine having a real, like real great sex life where you could last as long as you wanted. Most guys, you know, the average man doesn't uh, last five minutes in the bedroom while the average woman takes at least 20 minutes to get into a state before she's or before her orgasm is even possible. So what we have is a lot of dissatisfaction in the bedroom. Hence, we have a lot of sexual frustration permeating the society. Hence, everybody's swiping on Tinder or, you know, looking at Pornhub. Why is all of that so prevalent? That is a manifestation, not of how sexually open we are. That's a manifestation of how sexually repressed we are. And people are trying to find an outlet for it. Yes. So what I teach is, and so this is our third prong attack, is teaching people again about sexual, what, what, what I call sexual alchemy, and it's known by different names throughout history. I call it sexual alchemy. So what is alchemy? Alchemy in its traditional was how to turn a metal into gold, right? Can you transform, you know, this metal into a precious metal, right? And so that was alchemy in its, its kind of, you know, traditional sort of uh, way of looking at it. Then what we call sexual alchemy is how can I transform my raw sexual energy semen into fuel for evolution, for mm -hmm. growth, Sure. for expansion yeah and so that's what sexual alchemy is all about and that process actually is a conscious process that you can do so i teach a series of breath work so the first thing we do is learn to use the breath clear the body of our negative trapped sexual emotions as well as just our negative emotions our anger our frustration our worry our anxiety our doubt right because all of those things are toxic for the body all of those things are uh, when the body is toxic, then the mind is toxic. When the mind is toxic, the intelligence is lost. You cannot make intelligent decisions. So first thing we do is we look at practices. So moving meditation. So like, for instance, like, uh, so I'll just give you, we have the first practice you'll learn is the six healing sounds, right? If you decide to join the army and work with me and, you know, it's a set of moving meditations where it's just sound and energy and intention. So we clear the lungs through the sound. <sighs> We clear the kidneys, which is the water element, through the sound ch, ch, the liver, ch, the heart. Ah. Right? These sounds, sound vibration, you know, is, is a powerful thing. Yeah. Sound has been used, whether we call it prayer or mantras or sound 
is, you know, even if biblically you say the world was spoken into existence, God spoke the laws of the universe. It's all sound. It's all vibration energy. So we can use sound to actually clear our own bodies. So I tell guys how to do this. These are natural holistic techniques that have been used for thousands of years by different cultures and traditions. All of them have their own spin or way, but the principles are the same. So we can use sound to do that. We can use our air, breath. By taking deep belly breaths, we naturally calm the nervous system. Uh, one of the reasons that guys ejaculate very quickly uh, in the bedroom is because we're overstimulated. So all the coffee and porn and masturbation racks our nervous system. Our nervous system is shook. So we're all kind of living already kind of like stressed right at an unconscious level because it, but it's so prevalent in our society we think it's normal so we think it's normal everybody's popping this pill and that pill and antidepressant and advil and tyler and blah 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 this is not normal this is not normal yeah this is unhealthy this is manifestations of an unhealthy population we're a poisoned and diseased society and we must get to the real root of it and so uh, one of the reasons that, guys, ejaculation is a form of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is what governs your fight, flight, or freeze response. So it hence, essentially, when you're tight, uh, your nervous system is activated and boom, you yeah. want to release yourself very quickly just to get that over with. But the parasympathetic nervous system, for instance, when you just start deep belly breathing, like if we just all took a deep breath in, into the belly, filled up the entire belly and slowly released it. Follow the air out. Take another deep breath in through the nose. Follow the air all the way into the stomach and fill up your entire stomach. Like all four sides of your body were expanding. Fill it up as much as you can. Keep all your awareness to the breath. And now exhale, letting the breath out. automatically you'll probably notice you're a little calmer your voice is a little bit like even my voice has shifted a bit right why because i'm now shifting my body it's like an application right i know how to use the app on the body oh i can calm myself like this well deep belly breathing during sex automatically calms the nerve that one thing alone can make you last longer because your 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 arousal rate will slow down so guys are compared to fire masculine energies compared to fire and feminine energies compared to water. Fire uh, gets lit up quick. So guys get, you know, trust me, a woman just gives me the eye. She didn't even, she just looks at me the right way, right? And right away, I'm like, you know, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> what's up, right? I see that. I see you looking at me, right? Women, not, maybe not as much, right? Depending where they're at. Women are more like water, maybe take a longer to heat up right? A little bit longer to boil, but once they're boiling, shoo, shit, son, you better be ready because now they bring in the heat. And if you can't handle it, they're going to be very disappointed, right? Yes. So, yeah, right. So, so, so feminine energy is compared to water and masculine energy is compared to fire. As men, as we learn to slow down our arousal wave, so we learn to build our fire up slowly, we can then heat the water or the feminine around us and get them boiling. And then if we are both self-controlled people, then whew, they, we can use that energy to, you know, get the house project done or to put in those extra sales calls or get that, you know, bring a little bit more life to our, our everything because sexual energy is creative energy. So now a salad isn't just put a bunch of lettuce together and drench it. It's like, like me, when I, make, I look at the colors, like I want to put green, I want to put red, where's some orange, I need some orange, give me an orange, give me to bring all the colors and energies and vibrations of life because sex energy is containing all of that within it. That's why it's so powerful. So through the practices of, uh, of breath work, sound, then mind and meditations, learning to move the energy. So as a man, when we're aroused, all of our energy goes into our balls. Every woman knows this. Oh, you know, all the, and that's literal. All the blood rushes to the penis. That's why we get hard. We get an, an erection, right? Our, see, when you're aroused, you, phys, you have physical changes. It's yep. not just, it's, it's a physical thing that's happening, right? Yep. Yeah, like a woman's cheeks might get flushed, right? Her lips might get bigger. Her nipples get hard. A man gets aroused. He, you know, he feels 
Think of any guy knows. How do you feel when you're aroused? You could take on the world. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You're like, oh, come here, babe. Right. And you have that masculine drive to protect and serve and right. So as a man learns to take that sensation from his testicles and move it up his body. So by moving the mind from the testicles to the heart, you'll notice the quality of arousal changes. You're still aroused, but now you're more aroused of the heart. That excitement isn't sitting in the lower centers of the testicles and the penis. It's now sitting in the heart space. And guess what happens? Oh, now I want to release my energy through my heart. Well, when I release my energy through my penis, it comes as ejaculation. But when I release my energy through the heart, it comes like, come give me a hug. It comes like, come on, I feel you. I empathize. I, I care for you. I love you. Wow. That's now I, yeah. if I raise it to my if I raise it to my brain, I nourish my intellectual part. I learn I I can now be more creative. This is what sting, do you know uh, the the famous yes. music? thing yes, right he's a that. yeah he's a tantric practitioner did you oh, know that so cool i did not know that yeah yeah he's a tantric practitioner so he has non-ejaculatory sex like i do and he said when they asked him where do you get all your creativity he says from his sexual he calls he uses the word tantra which is an eastern sort of word i use the word sexual alchemy it's the same thing he has non-ejaculatory sex he raises his sexual energy but he doesn't release it through his penis he releases it through his creative expression his music i release my sexual energy through my politics through my speaking through my voice yeah. right if i'm if i'm if i'm depleting my energy or i'm putting poisons into my body all day long then i as a tool like if i was to if i was to overuse my iphone right if i was to misuse it then the applications wouldn't work as much yes yes oh. so similarly when we use our when we use our vehicle our body we misuse it then when we go to use it, it doesn't work as much. But when I keep my voice, when I hold it, I hold it. And then I'm like, now is the time. And then I come out, then I can vibrate. Boom. Well, and you're very intentional with it. That's well, this is what it's all about. That's do you so live cool. intentionally or yeah. do you live whimsically? Right. And like reactively, right? Reactively, whether, yeah. whether that's reacting internally or externally. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you creating your life or I say co-creating because I acknowledge God. I acknowledge that I cannot create unless God gives me the power to create. I cannot, I cannot win this war on porn unless God sanctions this sanctions this win. But the way you get God to say there's a God has rules. He's got laws. And these are the laws of that we're all, and this is not for a religion. I'm not talking religion here, people. I'm not saying that I'm saying that these are governing laws of the universe that we know about and the major religions have taught them. Jesus Christ showed it and he reestablished the law. In fact, when he stood in front of the establishment and he said, you have no dominion over me. It's exactly what I want everybody to wake up. They have no dominion over you unless you agree to it, but you are not obligated to agree to it. Your only obligation as a human being is to serve your highest, whether you call it God, your highest self. I mean, there's so many freaking words to describe that which is sits the all perfect version of yourself in your mind. And you'll probably never attain it truly because to, it's to, to be to error is to be human. Right. We're going to make mistakes. We are not God. So we are not perfect, but we are children or part and parcel of God. And therefore we have all the same qualities of God. If God created a universe, you can create some income. If God created a universe, you can create a beautiful family life and a beautiful sex life and a beautiful financial life and health life. You have the same creative qualities just in minute quantity. God is the, the word God means the omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent being that is the sum total of everything, which we are all part of. So just like the ocean is the ocean and a drop of the ocean is also part of the ocean, but we can't, and it has all the same qualities. The ocean is cold, it's liquid, it's salty. You know what? If I take a drop out, it has all the same qualities, but not the same quantity. Yes. So similarly, we are like a drop in the ocean. We have all the same qualities of the ocean, God, 
and we abide by all the same laws that God has set forth. So to win the war on porn, to get God to sanction the win, we must all desire it. And to desire, because God responds to our desires. This material world is a reflection of our desire. So if we desire actual abundance, prosperity, and we desire it in our heart, not just for our body, and we don't just desire it for ourselves in competition, but we desire, I desire your, I don't, I desire it for your family, and I desire it for our enemy, and we do, and you desire it for everyone as part and parcel of God. Yeah. I have political enemies but I desire their blessings. We have somebody saying, oh, stop, my brain cells are expanding during this gathering. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, but that was just too funny. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I love it, I love it, yeah. That's awesome. I, uh, I, like I said, like if you, if you, I have political opposition. Correct, yes. But I desire goodness for them too. I desire abundance for them too. I desire justice and righteousness for them too. Not because I'm perfect, but because it's the desire that God is responding to more than the action. That's why two people can do the exact same thing, but get two different results. Because the, the universe, God is responding to the desire behind the action. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes actions are misunderstood. Words are misunderstood. That's normal. That's happening. But those with true vision can see the intention and the, and the spirit behind the words. Right. And they can see whether that those words are malicious, meant to control you, or are they meant to free you? So these practices of sexual alchemy, yes, they make men better in the bedroom. I've helped men stop wet dreams. No more wet dreams. Within three months, no more wet dreams. Mm -hmm. I've helped men regain sex life. Can't, you know, they couldn't perform well in the bedroom. Now <laughs> their wife is like, why do you come in home? <laughs> they're like, their biggest problem is oh, no, cool. I don't like, she's, you know, I have other things I need to get done. <laughs> I'm like, that's your biggest problem. Your biggest <laughs> problem is your wife is sending you, you know, little sexy pictures during the day. And I was like, that's a great problem that you have. Right. You know, um, you know, and I, and more importantly than the bedroom, I love that men's lives and families and, and, and couples and people are being connected in that way. But truthfully, I get jazzed up more when I hear the messages of, man, my whole, my wife, my relationship, there was one guy specifically I'm speaking of, and he's giving me a public testimonial so I can, he uh, was been to sex, uh, uh, you know, other programs, sex synonymous and alcoholic uh, sex, like sex addictions and stuff. And he said that no one has ever taken the approach that I've taken with him when he came and I, I've been working with him. And he said, see, we have different approach because I'm a trainer by nature. So I took a training approach to this, not just a sentimental approach. I was like, no, I'm going to train you. And so it's like, uh, he said, he's reduced his pornography use by 60% within four months of working with me. And we can, because we track it so we can see it. 60% reduced pornography. He said, but you know what? That's not the greatest thing. He said, you know what the greatest thing about this is? My wife, my relationship with my wife has never been better. And he's not even talking about bedroom stuff. Yes, he's better there, blah, blah, blah. But you see, all of that starts to become a cherry on top. Yeah. But the real cake is the consciousness you develop through this practice. The real gold is who you become when you become more aware and you become more self-controlled like never before. And again, I ain't no saint and I don't claim to be, and I ain't no monk and I don't claim to be. No, I am a man like everybody else. I see a woman, I get just as aroused as everybody else, if not even more so because I'm in so in tune with it. I can also appreciate women on different levels now, right? When you watch a lot of porn as a man, and I'll admit this as a man, you just objectify women. They become complete objects, right? Like, because your mind looks at them, like you're training your mind to look at them as a masturbation tool, right? Oh, I'm just, right. she's yeah. going to do this for me. She's going to do that for me. She's going to, right? It's like, what are you going to do for her though? How are you playing? And, and she's more than a physical body, right? She's an emotion, no body. Are you stimulating her mentally? Can you give her enlightening conversation? I mean, so many women get turned on by intelligence. Mm 
Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Because it's a sign of, a, Oh, this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna like provide for me. He's going to protect for me. And this whole thing of like, I don't need a man in my life to provide and protect for me. I get it to a certain extent, but that messaging has now been taken to the extreme where some, some like, just like there's toxic masculinity, there's toxic femininity, oh, right? Sure. Yeah. Any, anything taken to the extreme or fanatical becomes toxic because again, it loses its balance, right? So as men, we have feminine energy and, 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 and masculine energy. We should, as men, I feel like, why not? I love being in tune with my feminine energy that I can feel emotion. I can cry. Yes, I'm the type of guy who watches a movie and cries. I used to not be like cool to say that. Like I would be like embarrassed. At, 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 there was a time in my life that that would be embarrassing. Now I just cry. If I feel sad, I'm going to cry. If I feel horny, I'm going to tell you. If I feel, uh, if I feel uh, 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 anger, I'm going to express it, but I'm going to do it in a healthy way. Right. I'm never going to let it. I say I'm never going to let it. My goal is to never let it control yes. me. Let me back up there, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Does. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Nakula does. <laughs> let, me, let me make sure that I'm trying to be as honest as possible in my language. I will do my best. Yes, I have let um, my anger get in control of me before. It's never good. It never comes out. In fact, I would say my biggest mistake in the last election, which was my very first time I've run for politics, um, and we did a great job. You know, we're a brand new party in Canada and such. But my la the last election, I would say I was too angry. I was mm -hmm. too upset with what was going on. So therefore it clouded some of my intelligence that could have really shined through and that's okay. Now I know, now I get better. Now I come back better, stronger, more controlled and more intelligent. That's life. Yeah. We cannot dwell upon our mistakes. We must learn from them. Then they're useful. Then, then you're grateful for your, now I'm happy. I'm happy. I ran. I'm happy. I did well. I'm happy. I, I didn't win, but I did well for a first time for an unknown party. You know, we got five uh, uh, overall as a party. We were able to capture seven to eight percent of the Canadian vote. That was close to a million votes. Canada is a small population. We're about 35 million. Right. So compared to uh, uh, America or other places where we're a, a blimp. But compared to, you know, it, when we look at the numbers and we look at it long term, I mean, that was amazing. Um, I've been very little known in my community and I was able to capture 5.5 percent of the votes for someone who's never even for, for a guy who most people have never heard of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we did very well, very, very well. And we're going to continue to do better because we continue to be committed to our growth. Yeah. Similarly, with my work with the Seaman Retention Army and the organization we've created, uh, we've made mistakes. I'm now better. Uh, for instance, when I first launched the program, the first 40 guys that bought the program, um, only a few of them actually finished the program. And, and, and they all got the results. And I was like, well, what happened to the rest of the guys? And it's just normal. Got people get excited. They buy something. Uh, they buy a book. I'm going to change my life. I've got the, you know, the, I, I, you know, the seminar, the book or whatever, right? You know, I, I got the healer now. We, we do these things. We get excited, but then that quickly dies off. And then back to life as usual, the pattern sets in. So what we learned, what I learned is I need to be better. I need to develop something, a, a better program. And so what I did is the program is great and it gets the results, but I'm like, the guys got to, they have to do it. They have to finish it. So we incorporated now an accountability piece. Yes. So now we track and I watch how, where you are. And I, I, I invested into a better system where I can see all of my students. I could see every single, we call them soldiers because we're an army, right? You know, it's, and we have fun with the army thing, right? Yeah, we're yeah. not really hardcore army dudes. Like, you know, some people are like, oh, my God, these guys are crazy. I'm like, we're not. It's not like we call each other soldiers and stuff. And in then in we kind of do a little bit, but it's all, it's all in a good spirit. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, um, and, uh, and so, uh, uh, but we've added an accountability tracker. So, and I can see exactly how many videos they've completed. Yes. Where they've completed. So I've invested into the company, into the organization so we can deliver a better service. Then we added what we call battalions now. So I'm just looking at my army board because I've got all these battalions. So we've got the Spartans. We've got the Sadhu soldiers. The Sadhu soldiers are specifically for guys uh, within the Vedic uh, kind of knowledge, uh, the Hare Krishna community. We've got some uh, the Vikings uh, as well. 
right? So we've got, and we've got some nomads. So guys who don't want to be part of battalions, but they're still part of the army, but kind of on their own, we call them nomads, right? So we've got all these battalions where we're, we're opening up another battalion because each battalion has, uh, has a, a maximum of 10 soldiers within it. And that becomes your support system. And we run that all through WhatsApp groups. And every single day, like today, we're recording this on a Friday. Today, we're doing a weekly debrief, motivation, conversation, and real conversation, not fluffy shit real stuff like guys man like oh man i jerked off the porn i didn't want to blah 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 just like alcoholic anonymous or you know like the alcohol groups or the drug groups or you know worse we've set up groups now uh for guys online to, uh, and to connect and have a support system and it's worked literally i've gotten like you know all these guys are chatting the phone's always blowing up because the, there's this conversation going on and these groups have stopped guys. Guys have been like feeling so hopped up with their sexual energy and not knowing what to do with it that they're wanting to watch porn. And then they jump inside the group and they're like, man, guys, like I'm really feeling, I need some connection. I need something right now. Boom. All of a sudden a guy's online. He's like, they're on the calls with each other. And then next thing you know, and then they realize that the porn was what they really wanted was connection. And as soon as they get the connection, this, the, 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 the porn is not needed anymore. That's what I was going to exactly. It's not needed. Exactly. It's like, oh, I don't need it. What I actually needed is just to be heard. What I needed is to say, I'm, 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 I'm horny and I'm okay with it yes. because people get horny. It's okay. And you're not shamed for it. It's right. Yes, yes, yes. You're not shamed for it. You're not shamed for being human. You're not shamed for being alive. Yes. We've created a culture where we put sex everywhere and then we've shamed everybody for it. Mm -hmm. it's weird and it's in my opinion it's being done on purpose it's being done to weaken and control us there is right now people on the planet that are look everything there's an opposite for everything so if there's spiritual people on the planet then guess what there's non-spiritual people on the planet who don't they as much as i think they're crazy they think i'm crazy yeah absolutely there are yeah. people right now, probably for sure. I know because they let me know. That's the thing. For whatever reason, whenever you put on the hat of a of a politician or someone who speaks out of something, right? Forget the label politician. Whenever you put on a public hat, people feel like it's it's permission to like you know, just say whatever and and cheat you. However, I really seen that. It's like wow. It's like you know, okay, I'm still a human, right? You know, and you're right. still a human. But that's the name of the game. I'm tough enough. I can take it. I don't care. Right. It's like, because again, too, being part of a man is evolving beyond that pettiness. You know, some guy calls me a loser online. The whole media, the whole, the, all the media, uh, the Vice News, Post Millennial, all these mainstream, the CBC, Global. These are, you know, Canadian, uh, Canadian um, news stations and stuff. Uh, I, there was news stations in the UK, everything, all writing. This guy breathes into his testicle, political candidate breathes into his testicles, blah, blah, blah. And that's all they put in the articles. And my whole city, I live in a small town, 65,000 people. Most people know my name now. And what they know about me is I breathe into my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fantastic because then maybe more people will breathe into their testicles. You're I love raising the, awareness. There was this one, there was this one woman. I, I don't, I can't remember her name. God love her. Somebody was like going nuts about me. There was all kinds of forums and conversations and, you know, talk about, you know, this, the, 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 the candidate who breathes into his testicles and, you know, what a weirdo. And then this one woman, God love women, it, women stood by me more yes. than most people. That's the funniest part about this whole thing is that the mothers and the women, they are the ones who rallied around me more than anyone else yeah. because they know that I'm standing up for their kids and for yeah. them. And, yes. and so this one woman, and I wish I remember her name, I can't, but she said on the forum, she says, at least he's got balls and he's aware of them. <laughs> That's what she said. And I was like, thank you. She's like, at least he's freaking aware of them. He's, and she was just went on to basically say, I, I, where are all the rest of the men that are standing up and fighting against the tyranny that's happening and this direct violation of human rights? Where's the guys? So it bothered me, of course, because I'm a human yeah. and I was upset and I'm still like weary. Like I'm like, you know, when people I go out, you know, and 
you know, I'm weird. I'm conscious of like, oh, you know, like, you know, if people really don't like me or think I'm weird or whatever they think. But then I always turn my attention back to God and say, and then I feel good right away. And I'm like, well, oh, yeah, but you say. love me. You love me. Exactly. And, and you know my heart and you know my faults. You know I ain't perfect. So, you know, I am who I am. My commitment is to improve who I am, but not change who I am because I love who I am. Yeah. And I love that God gave me the personality that I have and the knowledge that I have. Mm -hmm. And I think when people can have a real relationship, and again, I'm not talking religion here. I'm not talking, you know, I believe there's power in, in fellowship, whether it's going to church or temple or mosque or synagogue or, or, you know, there's power in getting together in those types of groups and drum circles. And, you know, all these things are the power of association, right? There's power in association. There's power in fellowship. But first, before you have that, you have to personally decide that I want a relationship with God. And as soon as you desire it, truly, trust me, God will show up in so many forms and ways. He will. He loves you so much that like soon as you are, he's like a child. As soon as you show, it's like my cat Hunter, uh, my cat Hunter. I, I can't even look at Hunter because if I look at him, I know he's going to come to me. Right. So, I, so I'm like, you know, I'm trying to get work done, but I really want to look at him. I'm like, don't look at him because then I look at him and then all of a sudden he's like, <laughs> and I always say he's my saint because he reminds me of God's innocence that as soon as you got to do is you just look at God and God's like, ah, one of my children want to hang out again. Like a parent, a parent, you know, a parent is never upset to hear from their child. Exactly. As much as the child has been foolish, as much as the child has done the most ridiculous things, as much as the child may be like, the, the, the parent may be like, what is this child thinking? Mm -hmm. But still, when the child calls, yep. the parent answers. So God is like that times a million. All you have to do is say right now, like if you're listening and you say, man, I really want to know that kind of love. I want to know that connection. Then just say to yourself, I desire to have a relationship with God. Say, God, if you don't believe in God, if you're thinking, I don't know if I believe in God. Yeah, say, say, God, I don't know if I believe in you. He already knows. You don't need to lie to him. But you could just say, God, I don't know if I believe in you, but I'd like to. And I'd like to have a relationship because I'd like, for whatever selfish reasons, I'd like my life to improve. I'd like, you know, my situation to be better. I'd like to find some happiness. I'd like to get rid of that vice. I'd like to be a better lover, a better man, a better woman, a better husband, a better mother. You ask God and you open yourself up and God will come into your life. And, 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 when, you, and when you allow those things to come into your life, then you'll see that this world is full of things that are trying to tempt you out of that. And that's how the, that's how we lose our freedoms. That's how we lose our prosperity. That's how we become slaves to a system, which is godless. Yes. It's a godless system. And, and that's the challenge of society. So, so the work of sexual alchemy that I do and the SEMA retention army on a, on a surface level, it's like, yes, We'll get you good in the bedroom. We'll get you understanding sex and we'll get you understanding energy and all that stuff. And, the, and just by the default of the type of work it is, you'll also get to know some deeper truths about yourself and life. And that's a beautiful thing. Well, and that's what I love. I love that this conversation has come full circle around to that love, that intimacy, that source connection, you know, that connection with God, because it's all about the higher purpose. And that's exactly what you're doing is you're forwarding this higher purpose, this call, and you're brave enough to listen to it and to use your voice and to use your vessel as a tool to, to get this out there. So how can people find you? What is the best way for them to connect with you? I have a couple of people asking for links for the Seaman Retention Army and how to get in touch with you. So could you just tell us what's best and then my team will drop the links for us here. Yeah, best way to get in touch with me is uh, YouTube because YouTube has a ton of videos that I put out there 
about the subject. So I always like to direct people there because you can subscribe. I'm constantly putting out new content, going deeper and deeper and giving different elements. So I look at it from the biology, like how do I make you better in the bedroom? So we talk about sex and techniques and all that kind of good stuff. But also we look at it from the spiritual. What does this mean for us as human beings? What does this mean for us as relationships? What does it mean for us as spiritual conscious beings? So youtube.com forward slash Nakula does. And I am assuming my name is somewhere on the screen. Yeah, we just dropped the, uh, we just dropped the site, the YouTube and the Instagram. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Instagram is a great place to keep up with me for daily motivation and like daily stuff uh, because I'm putting out tons of content. And then my website is the best place to get in in touch with me. There are, um, uh, again, we're making adjustments and changing as we go. So I know there's a few things on the websites and stuff that is changing. Um, It's a fluctuating thing. But I would say the best thing, if you're really interested, is I like to meet people. Yeah. To me, this is, yeah. I knew you were going to say that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing though, the best thing is send me a message, go on yeah. my website or on YouTube or wherever Instagram and send me a private message and say, you know, I heard you on, on, on Laura's show. I want to connect with you. I want to learn more and let's jump on a 20 minute call and have an initial conversation about what you're looking for or how I might be of service. And I am here to serve you and help you. And then we've got different programs. I guess I've got the semen retention army, but I also work with people one-on-one, yeah. right? So I work with, with people who want to go deeper and what that one-on-one coaching. I work with people one-on-one and I work with people inside the army as a group setting. So that's depending on needs and budget and all that kind of stuff. Cool. That's so beautiful. I'm so grateful for this, for for your role on this planet and for you listening to the call. And I literally, I think I need to listen to this about three more times because every time I'm with you, I expand so much. I learn so much, like the level of wisdom and understanding and love that you have is palpable. And I'm just grateful for you. And thank you for spending this time with us today. Oh, well, thank you for the opportunity and for being like, you're a patron of mine, right? You donate because a lot of like, the reality is, is I rely on people supporting me to be able to do what I do, to expand what I do. Like, you know, you could become a patron, you know, give a few dollars each month and all of that money goes right back into the mission, right? You know, I, 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 I'm just everything that I'm gaining, I'm reinvesting back into the mission. And so I, I just want to thank you so much for just being a support, you know, financially, uh, 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 physically, like showing up here physically and giving me a platform and, and energetically, because like even just a little, like, again, I'm, I'm a guy with an ego and believe me, when a woman compliments you, trust me, he feels it right. When you said to me the other day, like, oh, like your page is palatable and you're awesome that really fuels me because I'm like, yes, because I do have haters. I have people who really oppose me politically. We have a huge opposition. We have a huge battle culturally. I mean, people make fun of me because I practice semen retention, right? Guys made messages on my thing all the time talking about, you know, you couldn't get it. You don't ejaculate because you couldn't get a woman and all these, right? All kinds of things I hear. Uh So when I hear the good stuff too, it also fuels me up. So I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. I'll continue sending the love your way. Happily. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, and yes, definitely. All of your, all the information is here to connect with Nikula Das. So check him out, send him a message, chat with him. Yeah. I know he can help you. He helps me every single time I interact with him. So check out his videos, send him a message and thank you so much for being here. And I'll see everybody on Monday at 1230 PM Eastern for our next episode of Heal and have a beautiful weekend. Bye everybody.